Let us start with a mostly empty scene. If there are just some assets in the characters folder, and we are going to create this. A base character scene and a player scene that inherits from it. Covered this really quickly in the project structure overview. And the idea is that we want to have non-playable character and uh, the player can extend those properties, but also an AI, a non-playable character, can do the same things. That's the case in the game CrossCode, where when you see AIs roaming the land, um, they can jump just like you, they collide the same way. The biggest difference is that the input is handled by the computer, pathfinding and all those things, while for the player, you control it with the keyboard or a gamepad. So we are going to create this base character scene and Godot has a feature called scene inheritance that allows us to take a scene, inherit from it, and every time we will update the character scene, the player scene, and maybe later the non-playable character scenes will inherit from it. The changes will be replicated. At the same time, you can see with the final player scene that the player doesn't have the same sprite. It's not the same color. So we can override properties as well. It's just like inheriting from a class in object-oriented programming. Let us get started with this. Let's get started creating our characters. In the project, you have one folder called characters in the file system tab. Double click on it to open it. In there, at the root, you will find the base character script. It's mostly an empty template. It doesn't do anything. It's just of type kinematic body 2D. And you have a shadow sprite that all characters can reuse. Then for the specific characters, the player and the non-playable character called NPC, you have two separate folders. Let's open the player folder. And inside of it, you will find the character's body sprite. It's green. And a player script. It's mostly empty. It only inherits from the character.gd we had in the previous folder. Let's go back up and open the NPC folder to see that we have a similar character body, but it's not the same color. We'll use it to differentiate the NPCs in our prototype and the player. Very simple sprite, it's just prototype art for now. Let's get started creating the scene. Press Ctrl A to add a new node and our character will need to collide with the world. We don't have too many nodes to do this, mostly two, the rigid body 2D that you can find with this um, type of balloon icon. And we will use another one called Kinematic Body 2D, which gives us full control over how our character moves. So let's double click on it to create it. And this will be the base of our scene. Because this is the root node of our scene, we want to name it the same way as our scene. By default, when you do that, you will get the same name in the file system when you save the scene. So click on the node and press F2 to rename it to character. This is our base character. And then we can get started adding the different nodes we'll need. First, for the character to collide with anything, we need a collision shape 2D. So press Ctrl A and type collision. You will find the collision shape 2D node. And the yellow triangle, the warning sign that tells us that we need a shape resource for the node to work. Let's create the shape, go down to the inspector and on the shape property, click on the arrow and create a new rectangle shape 2D. We can zoom in on the shape. To do this, drag a selection around it and press shift F to zoom in on the selected nodes and select the character again. We're going to add our sprite now. For this, this is our base character class. We are going to use the NPC's body. Open the NPC folder and drag and drop the body onto the scene. When you release the mouse, you can add it as a sprite. It's going to create a sprite node with the body uh, texture set to it. Press Shift F again to zoom back on the body. 
the origin of the scene is going to be the pivot point of the character in a sense this represents its center of mass and I want it to be down the body so I'm going to move the sprite up then select the collision shape and drag it so it's below the body the reason is that in the editor this allows us to see the shape in front of the character we are going to move it up a little bit in general you want the collision box to be fairly small note that this one is only to collide in the case of motion to hit walls and all that stuff the hit box which allows you to take hits is going to be at a different place and of a different size this one needs to be small and about as wide as you'd like the player's body to collide and fairly thin there's no hard rule for the collider size you'll have to try it out in the game and adjust it later in the project also note that you must select the node and resize the collision shape using the resize points on the sides of the shape and never scale it with the Q the selection tool with collision bodies you may get errors if you start to do this now let us add a few more elements first I would like to add a pivot for the character we're not going to see the use yet just right now but it's very important to have a base pivot node that lets us mirror the character select our character again press ctrl a and look for a position 2d node this is a basic node 2d it has a position a rotation and scale the difference is that we can see it as it's represented with a cross in the view so this is going to be our pivot point for the character's body and all the animation in a sense it's going to be the animation's root node later on let's drag and drop the body under this position 2d and rename the node pivot I'll also capitalize the body and again move the pivot over the collision shape 2d so you can click and drag it right above the collision shape 2d just so that we can see the collision rectangle okay we need a few more nodes first remember we have a shadow so let's add this go back up one folder select the character and I'll drag and drop the shadow onto the scene I'll try to center it on the character and add it as a sprite now the shadow is above the character there's one option we can change for the shadow to appear behind it let's select the node and navigate down to the visibility uh, category and you have an option that's show behind the parent you can put this on for the node to um, be rendered behind the kinematic body 2d then the shadow is pure black uh, that's on purpose because we want to set the opacity via code or using the scene editor let's open the self modulate property and we can lower the alpha channel still with the shadow selected to make it half transparent I also capitalize the node's name I've made the decision to have all the files on the file system be lowercase because it's easier to type in other programs when you export the assets but when you drag and drop them into the scene they are going to use the same name as the file regardless of the file type that you drag and drop I like to have them all capitalized in the scene to follow the way Godot works by default because at the end of the day we are going to create more Godot nodes that are going to be capitalized and quite often we can keep the default name on the other hand it's a bit more rare to drag and drop the node and rename them so it's more convenient for me to rename the nodes in the scene and capitalize them than to capitalize all my file names on the file system we'll need to do two types of animations on our character one using the animation player these are the animations we are going to create by hand then we'll need some tween based animation animations we are going to control via code so we need two different nodes for that 
select the character again and we're going to add this time an animation player to start with. So this is the node we'll use to create our animations. Uh, I like to place these nodes right below the character so they are easily accessible to open the animation editor. And next let us add a tween node. Same thing, I'll place it near the top, although we'll mostly access it from code. These nodes are like components. It's interesting to have them around the top to know what the character can or cannot do or what types of features I can access via code. And with that, our character scene is ready. We can save it, press Ctrl S, and because we named the root node character, the scene's going to be named character by default put it in the characters folder. And although I have all assets lowercase, I like to keep the scenes which represent classes, uppercase, uh, capitalized, just like Godot does it. So when you look at the file system, so you can spot the scenes instantly and know what represents a class in your game structure, in your game system. Press save to save it. So now we have our base character scene. You can see it in the file system. Now it's time to create the inherited scene for the player. Go to the scene menu, new inherited scene, and now we select the base scene. We are not saving the new scene, we are selecting the parent. Let's select character.tscn and open it. And you can see a new tab opened that's unsaved and the nodes are grayed out aside from the top root node. Let's double click it to rename it we'll name it player. This is going to be our player class. And we're going to do one other change on the body node because we can override any property in the inspector. Let us head to the player folder and drag and drop the body onto the texture slot in the inspector. Now we can save the scene, press Ctrl S, navigate down to the player folder and say the player.tscn scene. Okay, there's one last thing to do to differentiate the two scenes. I've told you that we have player and character scripts. While we are in the player scene, let's drag and drop player.gd on the player and then head back to the character scene in the first tab. Go back up one folder and drag and drop character.gd on the character. And this way we have the two characters set up for our project to work on the character's movement. If we open the character script, you can click on the icon. You will see it's mostly empty. It extends kinematic body 2D. Now I'll go back to the player scene and this time click on the player script, which is player.gd. And it starts with extend the character slash character dot gd script, which means that it's going to inherit all the properties and functions from character dot gd and it's going to extend it. And that's where we'll put our code for the input management.